Good morning, dear mourners. We do welcome you to this service as we celebrate the life of our dear colleague, friend, brother, uh, Kenneth. Shall we arise and we join in that hymn, Blessed Assurance? still remain God even at such a time as this, O oh God. And that is why we do, do not cease to give you praise and honor that you deserve, O oh Lord. We thank you for this morning that you have gathered us in this place, O oh God. We thank you for the life of your dear son, Lord, whom you have called to glory. I pray that, Lord, as we celebrate his life this morning, you will continue to comfort us, Lord. You will continue to strengthen us, and more so the family, O oh God, that, Lord, we may see beyond death, Abba, Father, as, Lord, we have the promise of life after death. And so may you have your way, and continue to speak to us, Lord. Whisper unto us, O oh God, that we may be encouraged in Jesus' mighty name. Friends, our Lord Jesus Christ said, 
I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. I am sure these are the words of Apostle Paul as he wrote to the Romans. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. When we believe, there is nothing that can pluck us out of God's love, not even death. May we join together in that prayer on page four. Heavenly Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us a true faith and a sure hope. Strengthen this faith and hope in us all our days that we may live as those who believe in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We may take our seats. I do welcome you all to All Saints uh, Cathedral, Nakasero. Welcome the family of our fallen brother, uh, Lieutenant Kenneth, and all the mourners who have come to stand with them as we accord him a decent ascent of. You are welcome. I'm Reverend Walter Apunyo, one of the priests in this place, together with my uh, brother, David, who is a verger, also welcome the choir, and all of us in our different capacities. Allow me to invite now the MC to take us through the laying of the wreath. And after the laying of the wreath, we shall proceed with the speeches, and then the church will again pick it up from there. My brother, you're welcome. Thank you very much, Reverend Walter, the clergy, fellow mourners, good morning, all protocol observed. My name is Marcus Kuchiriza, I'll be your MC today, and uh, a very sad day it is indeed, but I would like everybody, including those going to lay the wreaths and those going to speak, we have started already 10, 20 minutes late. So my humble request to you is find a way to say your words as briefly as humanly possible. The church has another engagement, so we need to be out of here soon. Uh, we shall start with the laying of the reeds, and I'll ask uh, Uncle Frank and Auntie Mary to please start, who are Kenneth's parents. Please come lay your wreath. Kenneth's children. Joseph Craig, Iman, Ira, please come lay your wreath. Kenneth's siblings. Patricia, Betsy Mugamba. Chiki the family. Mm. 
the Bengana family. A representative from ISO and the UPDF. The maternal aunties. The paternal uh, uh, aunties as well, paternal aunties from Uncle Frank's side. The paternal uncles. Mr. and Mrs. Tandekwide. General Tumukunde and your wife. The Chitariko family. The Rakakoko family. Kenneth's cousins on all sides. The Munyeretsi and Quizera family. And uh, in the interest of time, I will just read out the others. Um, we have a wreath from Next Media, a wreath from Sipka, a wreath from Bitarakwate family, a wreath from Bikahuayo family. A wreath from the Bugari family, a wreath from HCRI Uganda, a wreath from Stanbic Uganda, and the church. Thank you all so much. We will now start our speeches. Uh, also, sorry, there was a wreath from the Bukenya family. Thank you. Thank you for that crow reminder. Um, As you have heard, Ken was a loving father, brother, patriot of Uganda, dedicated soldier, uh, an amazing human being. So I'll ask again that everybody who is coming here to talk, in the interest of time, please find a way to keep your remarks as brief, and I'm sure they will be meaningful, but a quick reminder that time is not on our side. I will ask uh, Kenneth uh, Chitariko, to please come and speak on behalf of Kenneth's friends and also his in-laws, but you will find that there's a special bond between these two namesakes, Kenneth and Kenneth. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marcus. Thank you very much, Reverend. Good morning, family and friends. This is a really difficult time for the Mwehiri family, and uh, 
We're very grateful for you to be here this morning. Kenneth was an extraordinary man. And as I've mentioned uh, over the past few days, uh, if it wasn't for Kenneth, I don't think I would have been married to Susan, his sister. He was my link and my support, and we struggled together for a year or so. But I will always remember Kenneth because he was the first friend that I had in the Mwahiri family. A couple of things this morning. First, um, Kenneth is survived by four wonderful children. If I may ask the children to actually come up here so you can see them. Joseph, Craig, Iman, and Ira, please come up here so uh, our friends and family can see you. Let's make this quick and you go back and sit. So these are Ken's children. I think you can all see Ken in them in many ways. So Ken has left us. If you come across these children, please impact their lives in the same way that Kenneth has impacted yours. Thank you. You can sit. A few things about Kenneth's last few days. Um, during the week, Kenneth called Susan and said uh, his high blood pressure was spiking. So Kenneth, being the soldier that he is, went to the clinic, uh, hospital. He was... Uh, Stabilized, and he came home, came back home. He was walking, talking to everybody. But on Friday, uh, Kenneth's team at home called uh, Kenneth's mother uh, sometime in the afternoon that Kenneth was not well. He was complaining of extreme backache and also uh, pain in his left hand. From what I understand, those are, are certainly... Uh, indications that perhaps uh, he was getting cardiac arrest. We all rushed there, his mother, Jules, Susan, myself, but unfortunately, uh, by the time we got there, Kenneth uh, was gone, and he lay peacefully in his bed, and uh, that is how uh, we say goodbye to him. As I said, Kenneth impacted a lot of people. And what is really strange is that uh, you find someone in your family who, although your relative, uh, is actually more of a friend than anything else. So uh, we will really miss Kenneth. Uh, everybody has spoken about him over the past few days. Um, he impacted. He, he was a man ahead of his time. He interacted with people above his age. All of you know who, who interacted with him. Professionally, he was outstanding. Lieutenant General Tumukunde spoke about him and his ability to be intentional with his work. Um, for me, uh, it's a bittersweet pill. I smile because when I think about Kenneth, I can only laugh. Uh, the things he used to do. He lived a free life. Mr. Mwehiri told us that Kenneth in uh, O-Level attended eight schools in O-Level. So you can imagine he was in a school every one and a half terms because he was impacting all those schools. And as I say, he was impacting them very positively. If you hear the things they say about him in all the schools, there is nobody who did not know who Kenneth was. So he was an outlier. So when you die, people should miss you. We shall miss Kenneth. And you, people miss you because you impact their lives. So I request that we try and emulate Kenneth. Let's be missed when we go, rather than forgotten. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for those kind words. Um, Kenneth impacted the, his organization where he worked, and we didn't even know this until we went to meet them, Julian and I, on uh, Saturday and we realized that he had done an amazing job over there. So I'd like to ask them to please come, uh, his good friends. Um, I know only one of you is going to talk, but uh, the people here that I'm asking to come are Major General Stephen Kiza, Captain Arnold Katwesije, Major Richard Apong, uh, Apango, Namukubia Fatuma, and uh, Gwini Kategaya. Again, in the interest of time, please let only one of you speak. Good 
Good morning, fellow mourners. We stand here on behalf of the internal security organization where Kent used to work. And I specifically was his supervisor as he was working in the Directorate of Social Affairs. We interacted and we had worked well until when he started feeling unwell and went home only to learn later that Kenneth had passed on. I also have the official message from the Director General who could not make it because of uh, ill health. And the condolence message, the family of late Kenneth Barige, condolence message. We in internal security organization have learned with deep sorrow the sad news of passing on of our senior comrade Kenneth Barige on the evening of 24th November 2023 at about 16 hours at his residence in Bogolowi, Kampala. The late Kenneth Barige joined the organization in 2002 as a vibrant young man just after his university education. He rose through the ranks with the organization and served in various capacities, both in the field and the headquarters. At the time of his death, he was a deputy director of social affairs. Throughout his career, Comrade Kenneth demonstrated a high level of patriotism, professionalism, commitment, loyalty to the organization and the country at large. Kenneth was an inspirational to all categories of staff, young and old. He was an officer of integrity, quality and content with an excellent memory. He was a critical thinker and would dearly, will dearly be missed by the organization and the country. The late Kenneth started feeling unwell some time back and has since been on medication. It's unfortunate that on the 24th of November 2023, his health condition deteriorated abruptly when he got a cardiac arrest and was pronounced dead shortly after. On behalf of the organization and on my own behalf, I thank God for his life, especially for the excellent service he rendered to the, to the country. In a special way, we extend our sincere heartfelt condolence to the members of the believed family during his destroying moment and urge them to be strong uh, so as to cope with this difficult loss. May the Almighty God rest his soul in eternal feet. Signed, Kano Oluka, Director General Iso. Thank you very much. Um, these particular people you see here, especially Fatuma, Richard, Arnold, Gweni, I think have been in Kenneth's life for the better part of his professional career. I think 20 plus years, if I'm not mistaken. So I know that as a family, as we're grieving, I know that this is also very painful for you as well. So thank you so much for being there in his life. Um, his military career started before he actually joined the military. Those of you might not know this. He had decided a long time ago that he was always going to be a soldier. In his S5 social, when they tell people to dress black tie, he came as a soldier. Um, this was, I think, predetermined in his mind, that this was the direction I'm going to take. Where he eventually did start the career, it was thanks to General Tumukunde. So, General, please come and give your remarks. Uh, children and wife of Kenneth, our elders here, Norman, Matthew, the parents of uh, Kenneth, internal security organization, ladies and gentlemen, or fellow mourners as they always say. I met Kenneth when he was a, a typical civilian, but acting as a soldier. I kept asking myself whether he could have flooked some training, because some people go out and get an opportunity to train, uh, and not necessarily departed to any regular force. 
Kenneth became so close to me and uh, I kept wondering what is best suitable for him. Sharp, I don't know, sharp to a dot actually, sharp, um, extremely swift, forward thinker, a good brain. So one day we sat and I said, Kenneth, what do you think you would fit most to do? He said, well, I would have liked to join the forces, but uh, I'm not too sure they fit my... He said, oh. So we kept talking until I convinced him that maybe it's better he seeks a career of sorts. So Kenneth, we worked together and he joined internal security organization. I left him doing well. I would want to ask Mr. Chiza what happened thereafter, but I left him doing very well. And uh, he was ahead of his rank, he was ahead of his posting, he treated uh, responsibility very, very seriously. He concluded tasks. He was a great leader. Uh, whenever there was anything to do, he would offer leadership with absolute ease. Kenneth was uh, the type that would have made a general maybe in another force. The fundamentals of our own society, I really don't want to criticize Ugandans, but I want to advise that you, you who offer leadership, especially those who are privileged, offer leadership at high levels, please find sufficient comfort with people who, saw, who look sharper, sometimes smarter, Find comfort with them because they, they supplement and complement your job or your task. Find comfort with them. Yes, because I, I always tell that uh, in my career, which was always interrupted anyway, in my career, I found that most of our leaders find serious discomfort with competent people. I never got to understand what the reason was, but there was always that uh, very obvious uh, occurrences and uh, you would wonder what the problem is. Uh, whenever I would deploy Kenneth in a corner, you would really see people fidgeting a bit. And uh, it, I don't know whether it's absolutely necessary. And then, of course, uh, I had hunted Kenneth. I looked for somebody who I think could add value to, especially that important uh, department of uh, an institution called intelligence. You need intelligent people to do intelligence. Yes, you, you don't want, average people can fit elsewhere, but intelligence, you really need intelligent people to do intelligence. I'm sorry when sometimes I appear. So I head-hunted Kenneth. Most, uh, systems, as most of you know, like the Singapore uh, country you hear of, they don't have land as big as Uganda, they don't grow coffee, they do, but they had a leader called Lee Kuan Yew, and the only thing he did, the only thing he's known to have done was headhunting, correct minds, and put, pressing them properly in service of public good and public duty. And that's why that country, which was as poor as the Republic of Uganda in 1962, or maybe poorer, if I can search my mind very well, is now a 14 trillion worth of you know, GDP. So, please, those of you especially who have inherited authority, please take 
take care that you bring in as uh, enough brains that then Uganda can be given, can be seen to have an opportunity to go further than we, and at a speed that we, see, that we do not seem to be moving at at this particular time. Kenneth uh, approached me uh, with many girls. Kenneth was liked by women. Maybe, I hope that's not offensive. Kenneth was liked by women. And uh, you had all the time be fencing him off and saying, Kenneth, our cousin was here to Kujakovas. Anyway, finally, he introduced to me a lady who I happened to know. At this time, I knew the father. The late Sam Magara, who is the lady before us here. I was very, very happy that first of all that was a good choice. But maybe more so for my own reasons, because I would have wanted to duplicate the competence of the late Sam Magara, whom some of you didn't know. So by anybody marrying the daughter, I pleased myself to the satisfaction that really Magara will be duplicated. And my mind tells me he will. Uh, as for Patricia, we thank you for giving company to Kenneth and for generating these children to add on the other group that I have known today. So, we have every faith. I have faith that Kenneth should have grown to all levels. But there is also another small point. Managing these kind of people when you command them, you need to fully engage them. They need to be fully engaged. I don't know if I have to teach these things here. They, they need to be fully engaged because they don't know how to deal with the, you know, absence of serious duty. So, I think we feel sorry that we've lost uh, Kenneth at a very young age. Um, we thank internal security for taking him this far. And we thank the management of the institution for giving him the appointments he was given. And maybe it could have given, it could have been better and that's some matter for another day. So we wish Kenneth a great rest, and uh, may his soul indeed rest in eternal peace. Thank you, General. As you heard, uh, not only was uh, General Tumukunde his, uh, the person who had hunted him, Kenneth had the gift of being able to talk to all age groups. Kenneth would sit and have a five-hour conversation with Patrick's son, who at the time was three, four, five years old, for five hours, and in the same breath, have a five-hour conversation with our grandmother. He's one of the only people I know who had that gift. He did not, once we sit and talk, we'll sit and talk. I always wondered, what are these people talking about? But that is Kenneth. Uh, our family has a representative, or I'd like to say head, and I'd now like to ask uh, Honorable Matthew Richikeire to please come and give his remarks. So far, we're not doing too badly on time. Thank you very much, uh, Master of Ceremonies. <coughs> um, for the last two, three days since the uh, passing of uh, Kenneth, a lot of things have been said by young people, old people, and, and so on. People who knew Kenneth better in social life than I do. So I will not dwell on saying anything much more than that has already been said. I just want to express my deepest sadness to both the families of Frank Mweheire and Mary Mweheire, the Ramnahes, who are represented here in large numbers, and also for 
uh, sadness to the family of the Magara. Frank has been, apart from Mary being my sister, Frank has been my closest associate for a long, long time, even before he got married to Mary. And I know the kind of sorrows they have gone through, through the loss of children. The loss of Simon struck them hard and struck the rest of us. Then more recently came the loss of the wife of Philip, which you know about. And today now, we are gathered here to say farewell uh, to Kenneth. On this side of the Magara, they have had similar tragedies. If I may say so, as I have told Patricia before, I'm one of the last people who spoke to Magara shortly before he died. I was in Nairobi. He had come from the bush to Kampala, and he made a telephone call to me in Nairobi. He said, Mr. Chikere, I am coming to Nairobi for treatment of my teeth. He has a problem with teeth. That's what he told me. Of course, in terms of intelligence, it was very difficult to believe that in fact it was the problem of teeth that was going to bring him to Nairobi. That's how things go, that's how things are handled in the intelligence world. But three days later, as you know, he got killed here in Kampala. There are other cases of the Magara family. You remember Rivereza, who was also in the bush. I was in Nairobi with Museveni, who is now President Museveni. At the time, he was heading the bush war. And I got a telephone call from Sam Katawarwa, who also died some time back, to tell me that Rivereza had been killed in combat in the bush. And I proceeded to inform President Museveni that Rivereza had been killed. He was shocked, to say the least, absolutely shocked. He didn't have even energy to call John Warije, Prince John Warije, to tell him that his brother had died. So he said, Matthew, can you call John Warije, who was in Zambia, and tell him Rivereza has been killed? And I proceeded to tell him he was shocked. He couldn't believe it. In fact, he called me two hours later again. He said, is it true that he has been killed? I said, yes, it is true. Now, Kenneth is like a combatant. He has followed, uh, followed in the footsteps of these people. And as we say goodbye to him, we must recognize the fact that he has been a combatant, both in terms of association with people, but in also in terms of the struggle of the National Resistance Movement. He has brought us together because Sheba, my wife, would have or is a, a grandmother of Magara. Kenneth, who is lying here, I'm his uncle. So these children, your children, Patricia, and uh, his children, now have Sheba's blood, and they have Richikere's blood, and they have been brought together. So I thank God for the life he has lived, the short life he has lived. He had many more years to go. And I can only say in the short time that I have that like all the other people have said, I wish him 
blessings of the Almighty, and may his soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Uncle Matthew. Uh, I would now like to ask, I have a very fantastic story about Kenneth and uh, when I first uh, saw him in uniform, but I will not say that today in the interest of time, but I will say it in Rukunjiri, because there we will have time. Uh, the siblings, uh, led by the firstborn Patrick, please come with the rest of your other brother and sister to come and give your rest. Um, as we say farewell to Kenneth. It's grieving again. Uh, in this same chapel, hardly a year ago, we were saying farewell to um, Philip's wife, my sister-in-law, um, and again, you came through for us. The support was incredible, and we could not have made it through without that. So we can't thank you enough for your love and support, and we're really humbled for your friendship. It makes it much, much easier to go through this. Um, also wanted to do a, a special thanks to my Stan Big family. I see lots of my board members and senior management team here. Thank you for coming, uh, really really appreciate that. I've been working with Stan Big for 10 years, so it's, it's almost like my family too, so it, it means a lot that you took the time to come. Thank you. Um, I also thank the UPDF and Lou. Thank you more. Um, yeah, we grieve again for Kenneth, who's gone way too early. Um, just a few things about Kenneth. Kenneth was a classic middle child who came after my sister, Susan. Um, I'm, I'm the firstborn, she's the second. So Kenneth and I had about a gap of four years. Um, so I spent a lot of my childhood actually trying to mediate between Kenneth and Susan. They were always in conflict right? because Kenneth didn't like taking instructions and Susan thought, you know, she was two years older, she could tell Kenneth what to do. So, um, you know, Kenneth was such a free spirit from early on. Um, and he could take risks that often got us all into trouble. Even though he was a middle child, he was one who would break into dad's room and steal his radio and do all sorts of things. Things that we didn't, I didn't have the courage to do. Um, so I was, always admired his courage. Um, whenever there was a risky, huh? Whenever there was a risky operation in the household, it was Kenneth who, who was in charge of it. Um, nevertheless, he was a joy to grow up with. He was a very jolly and happy child. And he kept his spirits really high, even in periods of extreme adversity. I always admired that the fact that he kept his spirit. Um, and the fact he was always a free spirit, but then the irony was that he decided to join the army, which I thought went against the grain of everything he stood for. Um, but he loved his job. It gave him solace to be in that command structure. And I think it brought a lot of discipline um, because he was always meticulous at you know, doing all his assignments. He was very curious. Um, I recall spending countless hours trying to explain some of the intricacies of economics and finance to him as he was putting together an intelligence report on the economy. Um, I really loved the fact that he loved what he was doing. He was happiest when he was doing some of this work. So um, I think it's always a blessing when you can find a profession that you really truly believe and, and like to do. So a few years ago, Kenneth was unwell. Kenneth's been unwell in and out for, for many years, but this particular, um, about four, five years ago, he had a bout of sickness and we, um, we converted our guest room in Nakasero uh, to, to look after Kenneth um, for many, many months until he got better. Um, he got his strength back, um, but he spent countless hours bonding with our little son. I think somebody mentioned that he was four years old, who is completely devastated by the loss with Kenneth because I would go to work, my wife would go to work, Kenneth was at home, so he spent more time with us, with, with Jesse, um, who is really heartbroken about Kenneth's departure. Even up to this day, Kenneth always checked on Jesse, and I always felt and cherished those moments that we we spent with him and we laughed with him, even though I knew that Kenneth was hurting inside, but he always found a way to, to, to laugh. And anyway, that was God's plan. Uh, he lived a solid 49 years with, with no regret. Um, he left four wonderful children, who I think you've all seen. Um, and I'm praying for God to 
grant us the strength, um, the family. And I also want to assure you that we'll do everything that's humanly possible to look after these children. So you are all our children. Thanks. Um, and also I'm praying for my, my dear parents to grant you the strength to go through this. I know it's difficult, but we're going to stick around and try to help you out. So once again, we're very grateful for all of you who made it this morning. I know there's lots of things you could be doing on Monday morning, but thank you. Thank you for joining us as we send, have a befitting farewell to Kenneth. So with all those, did you want to say anything, Susan? No? 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 Thank you. Thank you. You've caught me. I mean, I have to say something. So mine is really to say thank you. Thank you all for your support. I think from Friday, when um, we sent messages out that Kenneth had passed, Bugolobi, where my parents reside, was full in almost an hour. So, and everyone has been there from Friday up till last night. So we thank you for that support, and we thank you for all the uh, emotional, financial support you've given us. Kenneth uh, followed me. But as we all know, and most of you know, Kenneth thought he was the firstborn. He always thought he was older than Patrick. Everywhere he went, he would say he's older than me. I also let that pass because <laughs> he looked and acted older. Kenneth was the hunk in the family. Sorry, boys. He was the best looking of the lot. I put myself aside. But... Um, <laughs> Kenneth was a good-looking man, and uh, you can see that in his children. So uh, we've lost some really cool-looking dude. Kenneth was funny. Kenneth loved. Kenneth loved big, and he, he, he was magnetic. When Kenneth made a friend, he made a, a friend for life. Uh, my, the, my last words with Kenneth was on Monday. Kenneth called me. And I remember calling, I called Ken, I called mommy. I said, Kenneth has called me and he doesn't want to get off the phone. We, have, we talked for an hour. He was so happy. We talked about all sorts of things. He talked about his children. I got to a point, I told him, Kenneth, I have a meeting. I need to go. Then he said, no, you, let's talk. You say that's the problem with you. When I call you, you don't want to talk. When I don't call you, you complain. I said, okay, I'm going to call you back. After 30 minutes, he called me back. He said, you have been called. I said, okay, Kenneth, what's up? We talked. I mean, I even got to a point where I put the phone aside. I think Julian were talking about it the other day. He called Julian on Saturday. Julian got to a point where she also just put the phone aside, I think, in the kitchen. And he talked as she was doing other things. Kenneth was saying bye to us. I immediately after that call sent him a message, and I think I've shown a couple of you that message, where I told him, Kenneth, you have made my day. I told him, I have not talked to you like this in a very long time. Thank you for making my day. That was on Monday. And I said, let's keep this up. Thank you, thank you. And immediately after that, I called mommy, and I called Ken, and I said, I don't know what's up with Kenneth, but I have had the most wonderful call with him. And that was the last time he was saying bye. But at least I have that memory, and I will keep that message for life. So, Kenneth, thank you for the friendship. Kenneth was my best friend, my confidant. Kenneth, like Ken said, um, I wouldn't be married to Ken. He was... He, sn he kept sneaking him in somewhere or the other. Most of you have a different story of how Ken got into my life. But there was somebody behind the scene, and that was Ken Kenneth. So, Kenneth, rest well. We'll miss you. I'll miss you, my friend, my brother. But most of all, I think my best friend. So, thank you very much. To the children, you know, you've been with me forever. Nothing is going to change. I love you. I will continue being there for you. Iman, Ira, Craig, Joseph. You have been in my life. 
from when you were born and you are not living it. It's just going to get stronger. Patricia, you know, you and I, all right? So this is, this is just the beginning of a certain journey. Thank you very much. So to the rest of you, thank you for your support. Thank you for being there for us. And uh, God bless you. Do you want to say anything? Uh, <clears throat> I just want to thank you all for coming to share in our grief. And uh, I don't think there's anything I can add. Everything about Kenneth has been said. So just uh, Patricia, of course, the kids, sorry, mom and dad. But uh, yeah, Kenneth, rest in peace. Thank you. Thanks a lot, guys. That could not have been easy. We are, yeah, smack bang on time. We have just two speeches left, and that is the children and the parents. So I'll ask the children to please come and uh, give your remarks. We are here with you. clergy, family, friends, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Craig Barry J, and I speak to you today with feelings of profound sorrow as we mourn the passing and celebrate the life of my late father, Kenneth Barry J. here. When someone is removed physically from our lives, there is an impact. No matter how we felt about them, the relationship has changed and it can profoundly impact our understanding of the past and the future. In recognizing the cycles of life and death with its unpredictable twists and turns, we learn valuable lessons and it teaches us a series of moments and each event can contribute to the person that we are today. Though sorrow has brought us together, let us not forget the strength we possess as a unit. Let us find solace in the shared moments we had with my father the perfect, the not so perfect, as it is these memories that will keep him alive with us forever. As we attempt to navigate this moment of farewell, let us draw strength from the timeless verses of Ecclesiastes. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die. Today, dad would suddenly have shed a few tears if he saw just how many of you have turned up to celebrate his life. Family was a word that carried a very important meaning for him, and I know that he would be eternally grateful to you all. It's on this note I'd also like to thank my family, work colleagues, family and friends, all of you here who have showed their unconditional love and support. It means more to me and my siblings than we could ever share at this particular moment. I would also like to thank my mom, Betsy Mugamba, my other mom, and Patricia, my grandma, grandpa. Thank you all. May dad find peace in the next chapter of his journey, and may flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name, my name is Muhere Imani Hangwe. We are gathered here today in loving memory of my father, Kenneth Barijan Muhere. Other than him just being my father, we are united by our share of respect and affection for my father. His death has left such a huge impact on our lives. It hurts all of us knowing we won't ever feel his touch again, but at least we have peace of mind knowing that he is no longer suffering and resting well. In reflecting upon my father's life, I'm reminded of the profound impact he had on each of us. His legacy extends beyond family ties, and it is woven into the fabric of the respect and warmth we share for him. The pain of not feeling his touch is undeniable, yet there's solace in the knowledge that his journey is now one of tranquility. As we navigate his loss together, 
let us draw strength from the countless memories we have created with him allowing those memories to be a source of comfort and testament to the remarkable person he was i honestly wish that heaven had visiting hours just so that i could see his smile one more time but since that is not possible i wish that his soul may rest in eternal peace thank you so much And finally, I would like to ask uh, Mr. and Mrs. Mwehire to please give our last speech and eulogy for the day. Hello, Mwanas. Uh, before I start, I want to thank you very much for the support you have given us during the hard time we have been through. Uh, the recent past has not been good for us. It's not it's hardly a year we lost your daughter, Doreen. At 39 years, now it is Kenneth, hardly 49 years. And what is sad, these are ages which are far, far below the national, uh, the national average, which is 63. However, there is nothing we can do, but it has been a very, very hard time. Now, Kenneth, as you have seen, he was born in 1974. He did his primary school, Buganda Road. Second school, as you've had. <laughs> I still remember Ntari, no, Budo, Ntari, and Mwiri. Mwiri is where he did it in his hire. From Mwiri, he went to Makerere, uh, graduated with a BA in business. When Kenneth graduated, I said, now, I was still working. Should I start looking for a job for you? Um, no, hold on, hold on. <laughs> One, two, three days, he comes back. I said, but Kenneth, where have you been? I've been with Henry Tumkunde. <laughs> a week passes, and he comes back. Uh, when are you going to get a job? No, no, I'm still with Henry Tumkunde. We didn't, I didn't know what they were doing. But after some time, he said, I've decided I'm joining the army. I said, good for you. If you want to join the army. He joined the army. But then he was seconded to ISO. Most of his working life, he has been in ISO. And as I've heard, I think he has died at the, ra at the rank of something director. Now, the unfortunate thing, he has left two kids, Ayla, Iman, who are still in secondary school. But I must say, they had a wonderful mother, Patricia. And Patricia, as a family, we thank you very much. The way you have looked after these kids, and we can assure you, as a family, we shall support you to give these kids the education they want. Don't, don't get worried, and I, I think I've already told you, 
even I've told them, the kids, we shall support them to do any education that they want to do. Uh, it's unfortunate. Kenneth loved those children. I don't know whether you know. He loved those children. And we must do what he wanted. Uh, Craig and Joseph, we are here for you. Anytime you want us, please don't hesitate. Uh, Craig has finished the university. Joseph is already working. But if you want any assistance, please don't hesitate. We are here for you. Um, I want to thank you once again for the support you have given to this family during these hard times. They have been very hard times. Very, very hard times. Had the year from Doreen to now Kenneth. Uh, we are traveling to Rukunjiri after here tomorrow. We shall lay to rest in Rukunjiri municipality. Those who don't know, the MC will direct you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Uncle Frank. A uh, quick recognition to um, Director Tom Magambo, who is the CID, is the director at CID Uganda Police Force, who was a very good friend of Kenneth. Thank you for being here. And uh, as, uh, as you have heard, from here we shall be heading to Rukunjiri, uh, Marumba, in Rukunjiri Municipality. Um, at the end, I will try and see how I can quickly get directions and give them to you at the end of the service. Otherwise, right now, I'd like to hand back to the clergy. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, thank you, uh, MC, and everyone who has spoken. I know it is not easy to lose a dear one. Um, we may not understand the pain that you feel deep inside, but the Lord knows it. And to the widow, the children, the Lord says he is the father to the fatherless and the husband to the widows. And unto him we do commit you. May he continue to strengthen and comfort us all, the parents, the siblings, and every one of us in this place. Allow me to recognize the presence of the servant of the Lord who joined us as we began, and that is the Reverend Canon Ivat Mugarura, who is with us. I know he's part of the family, but the Lord will be using him to give us some words of encouragement and comfort later on. Uh, right now, I would love to ask us to, to sing, to join in the song, what a friend we have in Jesus. And as we shall be singing that song, we are going to also be offering. Just to let you know is that whatever we give will go to support the family in the burial arrangements. So give uh, generously as we stand with the family. And so the baskets have been placed uh, Around the corridors, please just look out for the one that is nearest to you. We shall be singing, and after the offer tree, uh, I'll request the people who are taking us through the readings, uh, Rachel and Nicola, to step forward and take us through the readings. Let us join in that hymn as the choir leads us. Thank you. We may remain seated as we sing and offer. Thank you. What a friend we have in Jesus All our sins and griefs to bear What a privilege to carry 
we continue to sing, let's arise and receive the offering. Father Almighty, we thank you for these gifts that your children have given, oh God. We commit it into your able hands and we pray that may you sanctify it with the precious blood of the Lamb, oh God, that it may help them in the funeral arrangements, Abba Father. May you also open the floodgates of heaven and continue to release your bountiful blessings upon these, your children, who have given in willingly to support the family. We give you glory, praise, and honor in Jesus' mighty name. We do pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Please, let's be seated as we receive the readings. The people taking us through the readings. Our first reading is taken from First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. But we would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, shall not, shall not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Nicola. The second reading is taken from the book of Psalms, uh, Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me, uttering slanders against me, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though a host encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise, arise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I have asked of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to, and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under cover of his tent. He will send me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies around about me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Thou hast said, seek ye my faith. My heart says to thee, thy face, Lord, do I seek. Hide not thy face from me. Turn not thy servant away in anger, thou who has been my help. Cast me not off, forsake me not. O God of my salvation, for my father and mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me up. 
teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Give me not up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they breathe out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Ye wait, ye wait for the Lord. Uh, that's the word of the Lord. Thank you. Uh, as Canon is coming, let me ask us to arise. We are going to affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. It is on page seven, the order of service. Together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please do take your seats as we receive the canon. Praise God. Thank you, Reverend Walter. On behalf of Borsen's Cathedral to allow me to be the one to share. I'll be quick. My name is Reverend Colonel Neva Tumugara. Just as a reminder, I'm part of the family. Um, Kenneth was, and he remains my cousin, even when he's dead. And uh, all that has been said about Kenneth, I endorse because I interacted with Kenneth, though I was older than him, but his character would never allow him to remain just at low for, he would always come up and interact. And that was Kenneth, full of energy. Uh, Kenneth loved relatives. No wonder he loves his children. Uh, so uh, we we'll definitely miss him, but we know that that's the trend that all of us must take, whether we want it or not. So his turn is now, my turn, and yours probably will be at a time we don't know. No one knows the time, but we have to be prepared. Um, we don't have time, and thank you for the scripture reading you have. You read, um, the first one is simply telling us about death. And death, I want to borrow the words of our late Bishop Rihindi. Whenever he would be talking about death, he would summarize it as going back home. Going back home. We shall all go back home. Home. When you are going back home, nobody should ask you as to why you must go back home. You are going home. So we believe Kenneth has gone back to the Creator. And that's the reference we have for death. When we, we get out of the physical body, the soul goes back to the Father, and that, to me, is very, very important. And that's the reason why we even use the word with, that we are celebrating uh, someone's life. Going back home, it means you're not lost. You know where you are going. You are going back home. 
thank you, Susan, for those words of encouragement. Um, in families, we are meant to be friendly, we are meant to be uh, connected through love. And I felt there was that love, Susan. Yes, you know, characters differ. Even identical twins are not the same because they are just identical. But what binds the family is that love. And I guess that's what was happening for the rest of the family members. I'm now on the family. Children, children of Kenneth, I want to assure you that you can only disorganize yourself but not because your dad has gone home. You are here. In our language, we say, you are the legacy of Kenneth here. He has gone, he has left you here. Now you have to take on his shoes. You have to be strong. You have to be focused. All the support you get will only come to you when you are positioned. And I want to assure you, nothing will deter you from getting what you deserve. Because you are children of God. God is still on your side. With or without your dad, God is still on your side. So be strong. By the way, in, uh, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 4, tells us that... Uh, Blessed are they that mourn. So when we are mourning, sometimes we say we don't mourn more. When we are mourning, we are blessed. Blessed are they that mourn, for they will be comforted. So we want to comfort you and assure you that you will have a life that is pleasing to the Lord as long as you position yourselves and as long as you keep in the knowledge of God, he will wipe away your tears. You will wipe away tears from your eyes, as Revelation chapter 21 verse 4 tells us. So, even as you cry, and we encourage you, if you have to cry, cry. It is okay. You are crying, you are mourning your dad. This is a moment that is not as easy. You know, someone comes and says, oh, it is, take it easy. It is not easy. But we are saying the Lord is with you to comfort you and to strengthen you. So the strength will come from that same Lord that we all believe. We are all weak, by the way. All of us are weak, including the priests. When it comes to death, we are all very weak. But because of the faith we have in the Lord, we are comforted. He's not far away from you. He's not far away from any of the family members. So take heart, believe, and focus. You will make it. Remember my words wherever you'll be. And then, to the rest of the family, especially uh, my uncle, uh, Canon Frank, and, Mary, and my auntie Mary Mwehiri, I have been talking and saying, we stand with you in this. It is not easy. In January, I lost my sister, and uh, in April, I lost my mom this year. As if the world has, had come to an end. Of course, our mom was the only manager back home. He left the place. He left a big gap. We looked at ourselves. We are almost all of us in Kampala. What do we do? Life goes on. So, to the friends of Kenneth, whatever you saw Kenneth doing well, emulate it. And whatever mistakes Kenneth could have committed while he was with you, just know that 
it's human. Because no one is righteous, yet all of us are made in the image of God. And all of us are benefiting from that love and care that God gives to all of us as long as we believe that he's Lord and Savior. So the death or going home of Kenneth back to the Father should be to us something to remind us like the children said, that there is time for death, time to die, and time to mourn. Time for everything. So it should be a reminder to us that we, at one point, shall live, inevitably live. So prepare for that time when God calls you when you cannot stand anymore, when you cannot live and talk anymore. That's the time that Kenneth is reminding us of, all of us. So friends, take it from Kenneth that there is time to live and there is also time to prepare. But for us Christians, we believe that the best preparation, the best preparation for us is to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. And nobody, none of us, is above that privilege. Oh, none of us does not deserve that privilege. All of us can accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, and we shall get all the benefits, no matter where you begin from. It doesn't matter where you begin from. Even in your last hour. And we believe the way Kenneth died. You don't know what conversation he had with his God. That Kenneth slept, you know, in peace. That's what I always pray for. I ask God, should the time for my going come, let me not struggle. Let me sleep in peace. I close my eyes and sleep because it is sleeping, isn't it? So why should I struggle? The eyes are op wide open. Why? Kenneth had that privilege to just close his eyes, calm himself up, and rest in peace. Isn't it what we wish everybody that dies? We pray that God rests him in what? In peace. For him, it was demonstrated there. In peace, he slept. How I pray that it happens to me also like that. I don't want to struggle in my way going home. That's the encouragement I want to give you. That's the, the comfort that I can point you to. And where do we get our help? When we are in trouble, my auntie Mary, as you know her, she's always smiling, laughing, what? For all this time, I have not seen Mary smiling. Meaning, it is deep, isn't it? Deep. But I want to comfort you. God is on your side. Even when you lose children, one after another. Like Job. Job, when he was troubled, he wondered whether or not there was no room for someone to raise his hand in cry and cry out and get help. Indeed, what happened? God came to his rescue. And we are told Job lived a happier life than he was in before. Having lost everything of his, God rewarded him. Aunt Mary, my uncle Frank, Canon Frank, God has good plans for you. If he can bless you with the children, he can, and even when they die, he will continue to bless you with other, in other forms. So stick to him. Don't lose hope. God is on your side, and he will be with you all through, and all of us. May God bless you. May God comfort you, our children. May God be our God 
even in the times of hardship and death inclusive. God bless you. Let's pray. God Almighty, we want to thank you because we know you have power over everything, including death. You yourself died and everybody lost hope that you who had demonstrated yourself as the prince of the world, you died. But even after your death, you defeated this death and resurrected and went to heaven to prepare, to prepare us places where we shall all go. So remind us and strengthen us to know that that journey that you took is still with us. And we shall take the same journey and go back to you, O oh Lord. Bless our family, comfort them. Bless our children, comfort them. Give them hope, even at this time when we are saying bye-bye to the dad. May your comfort be exhibited in this process to the end and even beyond. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit I have prayed. Thank you so much, Canon. Um, we shall get into a time of prayer as we draw towards the conclusion. I'll ask us to stand and we join in that hymn, On Christ the Solid Rock. It is on page nine. On Christ the Solid Rock. Uh, when the hymn is getting done, I'll ask the family, the siblings, I mean the, the children and the widow, to come in front here and we pray together with you.
prayer. Grant us, Lord, the wisdom and the grace to use right the time that is left to us here on earth. Lead us to repent of our sins, the evil we have done and the good we have not done, and strengthen us to follow the steps of your Son in the way that leads to the fullness of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Merciful Father and Lord of all life, we praise you that all people are made in your image and reflect your truth and light. We thank you for the life of your servant Kenneth Barreja Mwehere, for the love and mercy he received from you and showed among us. Above all, we rejoice at your gracious promise to all your servants, living and departed, that we shall rise again at the coming of Christ. And we ask that in due time we may share with our brother that clearer vision when we shall see your face in the same Christ our Lord. Father Almighty, we continue to praise and exalt your holy name, O oh God, because even in changing scenes of life, you remain the same Lord yesterday, today, and forevermore, O oh God. It does not matter, Lord, what has happened in our lives, but what matters, O oh God, is to continue leaning on you who is the pillar that supports us at such a time as this and therefore Lord I commit these your children oh God I commit Lord the children of the departed and the widow into your able hands oh God Father sometimes even if we speak many words of comfort oh God it may not reach the depth of the pain that we are experiencing oh God it is only you Lord who can touch that depth and therefore Lord I pray that Lord may you touch them from that depth oh God that you may comfort them from on high oh God let your strength rest upon their lives Abba Father that they will see beyond what has happened oh God Lord the demise of their father could have left a gap in their lives, in the family, oh God. It is only you who can fill that gap. And therefore I pray that, oh God, may you have your way in their lives, oh God. Not only these, but the siblings, oh God, the parents of the deceased, and all of us who are gathered in this place, oh God. I pray that we shall find comfort and strength in you, O oh Lord God Almighty. And so I pray that, Lord, may your presence abound with them. May you take hold of their hands and carry them, Lord, through this trying moment, O oh God. I pray that, Lord, you will walk with them. They will not feel that they are alone. I pray that no power of darkness, Lord, will use what has happened, O oh God, to weaken them. May you close every door that the enemy can use to weaken them, Lord, that these may continue to stand in your strength, Abba, Father. I cover them with the blood of Jesus Christ and pray that, Lord, may you continue to reign as Lord in their lives. I pray that may what has happened in the life of our dear friend, O oh God, who is lying before us here, be a reminder to all of us that we are just pilgrims here on earth, O oh God. The path that he has taken is what we shall all follow. I pray that, Lord, as you remind us of this, you'll teach us, O oh God, to put our lives back in the right path, Lord, that when we shall reach that moment of leaving this world, we shall not live in shame, but we shall live rejoicing because we know where we are going. We know that we are just transiting, Lord, from this life to a much better life, oh God. May each and every one of us in this place, oh God, have that confidence. Lord, if there is anybody whose life is not in the right path, help us, oh God, to utilize the days that you have still left for us, oh God, to put our lives right with you. Thank you, Abba Father. I pray that, Lord, you continue to reign in our lives. Continue to stand with the family. Continue to uphold them with your outstretched arm, O oh God. Continue to defend them against every wicked schemes of the enemy. And I pray for each and every one of us, O oh God, that even as we continue with the process of sending him off, Lord, as his body will be taken home, Abba Father, may you be at the center of everything, O oh God. I pray for journey mercies, O oh Lord God Almighty, that each and every person who will be traveling, O oh God, will travel safely, Abba Father. And all of us will accord our fallen brother a decent scent of our God. And therefore, 
I cover every means of transport that will be used with the precious blood of the Lamb. And if there be anything the enemy has laid on the way, O oh God, to cause accidents, may you move before your children as a consuming fire and devour, O oh God. Level the ground before your children that they will all travel safely, O oh God. We give you glory, praise, and honor. In all these we pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let me invite the canon to send us out with a benediction. For purposes of focus, we are going to all raise our hands towards these children and bless them so that they can get the comfort that we have been praying about. God Almighty, we want to commit these, your children, in your hands. That, Lord, you will not, never, at any point, leave them as orphans. But they will be your children. They will be strengthened by you. And they will serve you in accordance with your will. May the blessing of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, our children. May this blessing be upon the entire family. May this blessing be upon us, friends of Kenneth. May this blessing be upon us as a church, as families, as communities, as a nation. And may this blessing take you home safely and reach you safely. And may this blessing remain with us from today and always. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, before I invite the MC to give us the directions, allow me to hand over this that we have given to support the family. We've been able to raise 3,430,000 shillings. Thank you for your generous giving. Let me ask. SMC. Thank you very much. So for those of you who would like to escort us to Kenneth's final resting place, we are going to Marumba. And uh, how to get there is uh, on your way into Rukunjiri town, just before you get it around Nyachivare hospital, on your left is a turning that you will take. We will put uh, some banana plantations on that left just before Nyachivare hospital. You will take that left and go all the way till the next trading center. There will be other banana plantations that will direct you to the house. But once you get to that center, really, you're almost there. So again, the left just before Nyachivare Hospital, same side as the hospital, and then you will go all the way till the trading center, and from there there will be other banana plantations to guide you from there. But again, you would have almost reached at that point. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, MC. And I must really commend you for being a very good timekeeper. God bless you. Um, and thank you all who have come. We've now come to the end, and we are going to arise and conclude with a hymn, Fight the Good Fight. Let's all stand and join together in that hymn.